In today's tutorial we are going to solve problem 10.36 and this problem we are given that a helical extension spring has a full twisted loop means and it is shown in this diagram if you see over here we are given the, this is the external diameter and if you see this is the wire diameter from this point up to this point the radius is this one since it is full twisted loop so r1 is equal to mean coil diameter and r2 is starting from here up to this point so as this radius is given so if we add this distance as well it will give us r2 r2 is equal to 1 over 4 plus d divided by 2 and the material used is oil quenched and after that it is tempered a spring has 84 coils and it is closed Want the preload FIS 16 LBF. What we will have to do is to find the close length of this spring L0, which is equal to 2C minus 1 plus NB whole and 2D. And in the second part, we have to find out torsional stress in the spring corresponding to the preload. This is that preload, and we have to find out the torsional stress because of it. And you know that tau is equal to KB into a table d divided by rd cube after that we will have to find out the spring rate k and spring rate k is given to be k is equal to d to the power 4 g divided by eight and a to d cube we will have to find what load will be required to cause permanent deformation for that what we will have to find out is how to find out the force cause deformation in the body and we also will have to find out the force cause permanent deformation in this point B and we also have to find out the force at point A and we will take minimum force out of them and after that uh, that minimum force will be taken and we will have to find out the deflection for the string Y and you know this Y is equal to F minimum minus fi divided by k so let's solve the problem so this is the given data and this is the mean coil diameter d which is equal to od minus d and od is 1.5 bar diameter is 0.162 so putting these values it will give you mean coil diameter d is equal to 1.338 inches after that what we will have to find out is d length for that we will use a formula that is 2 into mean coil diameter minus wire diameter plus nb plus 1 into d for l0 we can use another formula as well which is 2c plus nb minus 1 whole into d it is 1.338 and wire diameter is 0 0.162 and number of turns in the body is 84 so putting these values that will give you free length equals to 16.12 inches now in part b what we are required to find out is find out tau i and as i told you it is equal to kb into it fid divided by pi d cube this is given to us which is 16 lbf that is 1.338 inches and this word diameter is 0 0.162 and we don't know the value of this and this is equal to 4c plus 2 divided by 4c minus 3 and c is equal to mean coil diameter divided by wire diameter so let's find out value of c and it is equal to 8.26 now put this 8.26 over here so it will give you kb equals to 1.162 after that for fi put this value for mean coil diameter put this value for wire diameter put this value and for kb put this value after putting the values it will give you tau i is equal to 14.95 kilo psi and now after that what we will have to find out in part c is k and this k is equal to t to the power 4 g divided by 8 and a d cube so this is the formula and you know the value of wire diameter and mean coil diameter in this equation you don't know the value of g and an a 
d can be formed from table 10.5 and in a value can be found from this equation and it is in b plus g divided by e g and e value can be found from table 10.5 so let's go to the table 10.5 uh, these are the values of g and e this is their table 10.5 uh, since the spring for this problem was oil quenched and tempered so this is that wire and the values for e is 28.5 mega psi and for g it is 11.2 mega psi let's put these two values in this equation and s and b is 84 so put these values over here it will give you an a is equal to 84.4 tons this is 11.2 mega psi this is 0 0.162 inches and this is 1.338 inches and this na is 84.4 so putting these values it will give you k is equal to 4.855 lbf per inch now let's go towards the part d and in part d we were required to find out the minimum force that will produce permanent deformation for that what you will have to do is to find out those stresses at which that permanent deformation occur and as you know that that permanent deformation at body and point p is torsional unit strength and for point a it is sy first of all what we will have to do is to find out this uh, sut and we know that sut is equal to a divided by d to the power m and the values of a and d can be found from table 10.4 this is table 10.4 and our spring was oil quenched and tempered so this is that wire and the value of m is 0 0.187 and the value of a is 147 kilopsi dot inch to the power n when you put these values in SUT it will give you 207.1 kilopsi now since we know the value of SUT we can find out SSY so for that what we will need is to find out that percentage from table 10.7 so let's go to the table 10.7 if you see over here the spring is oil pinched and tempered so these are the amount of percentages so uh, this is the uh, percentage for point a that is in bending so uh, sy is equal to 0 0.75 of sut and sut is 207.1 so it will give you 155.3 kilo psi now for the body this is that percentage you can take any value from 45 up to 50 percent let's take 50 percent and 0 0.5 multiplied by 207.1 will give you 103.5 kilo psi this is the torsional yield strength for the body to find the torsional yield strength for the critical point b this is the required percentage so 0 0.4 into 207.1 will give you 82.84 kilo psi since we know the values of yielding stresses at critical positions so from these stresses we can find out the amount of force that will yield the spring at the corresponding position let's find out the amount of force that will be required to permanently deform the body of the spring stress and the body tau is equal to if you want to uh, permanently deform the body it will require torsional yield strength ssy so we will replace the tau with ssy uh, after that bring this over here and also divide these on this side so f is equal to pi d cube and to ssy divided by at kb and 2d you know for the body uh, the ssy is 103.5 and per diameter d is 0 0.162 and this d is 1.338 and this kb is 1.166 so putting these values it will give you f is equal to 110.8 lbf this is the torsional yield strength of point b to find the required force for point b this formula is used but ssy will be this one and kb will be equal to 4c2 minus 1 divided by 4c2 minus 4 and you know c2 is equal to 
to your 2d or 5d and as i told you earlier in the start of the lecture that r2 is equal to 1 or 4 plus d divided by 2 so this is the c2 r2 divided by d c2 is 4.0 at 6 now since you know the value of c you can put this value for c2 minus 1 divided by 4 c2 minus 4 so when you put this c2 value in this equation it will give you the value of kb so it's calculated and it is 1.243 so uh, this the value of kb for it is 1.243 and ssy is uh, this 84 82.84 and this y diameter is 0 0.162 and mean coil diameter that we calculated was 1.338 so putting these values it will give you f is equal to 83.16 now let's move on further and find this value for point a you know that stresses at point a is equal to f into 16 k a d divided by pi d q plus 4 divided by pi d square to permanently deform uh, point a you need to apply the stress at that point it should be equal to sy so replace sigma a with sy now we need the value of sy we also know the value of mean coil diameter and wire diameter to find f from this equation you need to find out the value of unknown ka and that is equal to 4c1 square minus c1 minus 1 divided by c1 into c1 minus 1 so this is the formula for ka and you know that c1 is equal to 2 r1 divided by d and earlier i told you that r1 is equal to mean coil diameter d mean coil diameter value is 1.338 and the value of word diameter is 0.162 so putting these values it will give you c1 equals to 8.26 now since you know the value of c1 you can find out the value of k a so put this value in this equation and it will give you k is equal to 1.099 now find this f and for that divide this whole term to the left side of the equality and putting the values you will get this so force that will be required to cause permanent deformation at point a is 35.8 lbf now in these three forces the minimum force is 83.1 and now find out the extension in the spring because of this force for that uh, you know that uh, the extension or deflection in a spring is given by a formula that is y equals to f minus fi divided by k and as you know that f is equal to 83.16 and fi was given to be 16 and this k is 4.855 so when you put these values it will give you y equals to 13.83